Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Civil War Generals 2. It is, I guess, what the channel's throwback Thursday uh, today, and we're returning to the old 1997 uh, classic uh, by Sierra. Uh, this is, I forget which episode it is, but we're a ways into the campaign, uh, the grand campaign, playing as the Confederacy. We're in 1862. We're in Jackson's Valley campaign, and we just won a minor victory at the Battle of Front Royal. We're now in the process of re-equipping our troops, although we don't have a lot of money to do that with. Uh, these regimental sized battles don't tend to give you a ton of money uh, to play around with. Uh, we have $23,000 to re-equip soldiers of ours, and there aren't a lot of weapons that, as I said, we can afford here. Uh, most of the brigades are too large to be able to afford upgrades based off of what we do have to spare. I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to equip Ashby's uh, Cavalry Brigade with Manyard Carbines. Uh, they had Cook uh, and B Musketoons, but we'll go ahead with the Manyard Carbine here. That leaves us with $10,000 left over, uh, which we are going to use in what way? What way should we use it? I don't even know if there's anything I can use it on with, with just $10,000. I guess we can use it to upgrade Isaiah Trimble's brigade uh, from Lorenz rifled muskets uh, to uh, Enfield rifled muskets, which will increase their firepower by one and leave us about $1,400. So that'll complete the weapon rearmament phase. We are now moving into the historical battle of Winchester, uh, apparently alternate number one. This is interesting. I tried to play the other day uh, and uh, loaded the same exact save, the same exact result, and uh, it was the historical battle of Winchester. Now the game's telling me it's alternate one. Um, I, the reason I didn't use the previous video, though, is everything froze because this game is not very stable at all uh, when I run it. Uh, often I have to save every, every turn to try and get through a battle, but... Um, because it is a game I really, really enjoy, and because it's a game that I enjoy sharing with all of you, I'm willing to do that. With that being said, we are fighting the Battle of Winchester Alternate 1. Banks should meet Jackson head-on and hope to defeat him soundly. If he can do this, then he should mass his troops and, er, and take on Ewell. The Rebels' best hope is to work the Union flanks, trying to encircle them and meet them in the middle. Uh, the Battle of Winchester was a disaster for the Union strategy for taking Richmond and putting a quick end to the Civil War. Stonewall, Jackson over or Stonewall Jackson's overwhelming victory resulted in the deployment of thousands of federal troops to defend Washington against a rebel advance up the valley. The Confederates took so many prisoners and captured so much supply that they laid their name in the Union General Commissary Banks. Yeah, this is a totally different write-up. All right, so we're in. Uh, enemy troop movements detected, so it looks like the Union get to move their troops first which they mostly just dug in. Uh, it looks like the bulk of the Union troops are in a pretty strong line here to the south of Winchester. This is interesting. This is a very different deployment than the historical battle of Winchester. The Union look much more ready uh, to fight in this engagement. But we also have more troops, I think, on the field than uh, the game usually starts with. So, And our artillery is already deployed in various positions. I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and go ahead and reduce the number of enemy artillery batteries that we have arrayed against us. And so the first thing we're going to do is really concentrate our fire one by one on each federal battery. That does mean we are going to take some casualties in our own artillery, but a focused barrage against one of their batteries should hopefully, over the course of many bombardments, wear them down here. And you can actually see that this first battery here, the F Battery of Pennsylvania Artillery, uh, has been driven from their positions. So that's a, a successful result, I like to think, there. Uh, meanwhile, I think the bulk of what we're going to do here is actually pull some of our infantry here to the west back a little bit and uh, dig in, because I don't want to attack some of these big Union regiments out in the open um, without supports. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, dig some of our troops in here, uh, go ahead and move other troops in as well, and uh, see if we can... Oh, shit. Undo that. Yeah, I don't want to move them in, in not in line of battle. All right, so we're going to do this. This is Yule's troops to the north. Meanwhile, I, I feel like we'd be better off shifting all of our troops to one position here uh, to deal with the Federals here. If we could move our troops west and engage them as one body of forces, that might be the sounder thing to do. I'm not sure. 
But with these three guns that we have unlimbered here, we're going to focus on the far right federal battery of artillery and see if we can cut it down to size. We don't have as many guns working for us, but the E battery of Pennsylvania artillery is our target down here. And we'll unlimber these guns. And these guns. Um, we're going to shift some of our troops west, I think, to protect some of these guns. So let's move these guys here, move them into line. We'll also move some troops over here into line. All right, we have a lot more troops on the right flank, I think. I think, I'm hoping I'm still getting some reinforcements here because this doesn't seem like a lot of troops. Looks like we will get a bunch around nine o'clock and 10 o'clock and throughout the morning. But uh, we, we've got several hours until then, so we're going to have to kind of fight with what we have for the moment. Uh, with that being said, that's pretty much all of our troops moved, so we'll go ahead and end the turn. We'll see what the Federals do. Looks like their artillery is focusing on infantry of ours, but they're targeting two different infantry units. So that's a good, a good thing for us. Meanwhile, the guns we drove off did reform, so we're going to go ahead and hit them again to see if we can rout them. Ideally, we route them and drive them completely from the field. Can't hit them with any of these guns with any level of a certainty. I fired indirectly at them, and we did drive them back again, and they did route. So they are routed, and they are running. Meanwhile, we're going to focus all of our artillery on the E battery, Pennsylvania artillery here on the flank. Try and drive them back. You can see some of our own artillery is starting to pay for for the constant battery fire. Their uh, efficiency is dropping into the yellow. But we've knocked out one enemy battery, and the goal is to, is to knock out a second. Okay, these guys got to be close. All right, so we did drive them back. I think we'll shoot at them one more time with one of our weaker batteries. Or maybe more, I don't know, I guess. We'll just go with this. I'm gonna try and route them. All right, so we've routed two federal batteries of artillery. And I think the remaining shooting is gonna be done against the 28th New York here, which is in column formation and thus a very easy target for artillery. So we'll hit them hard with our accurate Whitworths and our four firepower Napoleons and we'll, we'll take them down a peg. Meanwhile, I am going to kind of continue shifting over here to the west a little bit. At least for two of my units, my other, arti my other infantry, I guess we'll dig in here to protect the guns. So we'll keep three regiments here on the right to protect these five batteries of guns. Two infantry will shift west to help protect the guns over there. Uh, did these... These guns already fired, right? Yeah. All right, there are two more federal batteries of artillery that we need to deal with, and these are going to be harder to, to dislodge. One's an ordnance rifle unit, and one's a Napoleon unit. Uh, we've got a considerable number of guns, just not... Oh, shit, I hadn't fired at them yet, apparently. All right, well, that was actually a reasonably good return for us. Was that the only battery that hadn't fired yet? Yeah, it looks like it. So we did a little bit of damage here to these Napoleons. I guess we could engage them at longer range with our units on the left. Uh, the problem is at closer range, the Napoleons are pretty pretty deadly. Um, let's leave these troops dug in for the moment. We'll see what he does with his artillery if he continues to focus on our infantry. If I can wait to move my troops till we have his uh, guns suppressed, that would be that would be great. Okay, he's got two batteries firing against us. We're going to counter battery the, the second one here. All right. So he's moving some of his infantry forward. 52 firepower. Yikes. All right. Um, in any event, he didn't do too much damage there, I don't think. This battery of artillery can't aim against any of the enemy guns, so we'll shoot them against the second mass because they're close and can be hit. This battery of Eldritch's artillery can shoot at the enemy. We're going to go ahead and go after their Napoleons. These guys are weaker at long range. We can't target them with this battery. So we're going to go ahead and go after the 27th Indiana, which is closing in on our infantry here with 52 firepower. 
All right, this battery of James rifles is going to focus on the 4th uh, U.S. artillery. And Rice as well as well. So we're losing a little bit worse than we're getting in these bat in these engagements. But over time, again, the concentration of firepower is is telling. And we did drive them back here. So we drove another federal battery out of its position. Um, these guys are Tredegar rifles. We'll go ahead and hit the limbered up unit. And we routed them. So obviously they can rally and all that, but if they route, they lose all of their ammo and they run kind of uncontrollably. So that's a very good result for us. Only one more battery of Federal Artillery that we can currently see in position against us. We're going to go ahead and bombard. Looks like that unit didn't even get shot back at. These guys already fired. These guys did have fire returned against them. So we got a couple of rounds in this turn against them. Let's move the 16th miss back this way. If I can surround an enemy unit, I will gladly do it. If he wants to attack my artillery, I maybe should invite him to do so. So we have one here, two, three... We need five units. We've only got four infantry units over here, so we'll actually move these guys back. I'm going to see if the enemy will take the, the bait and attack our, cav or our artillery here. If they do, we might be able to surround this dismounted New York Cavalry Regiment and destroy it. We'll have to see what happens there. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of our infantry here on the left is going to continue to hold in place as we attempt to... Uh, wait for these reinforcements that I really think we need badly, or at least until we've uh, neutralized the enemy artillery. It doesn't look like the enemy's moved at all, but he has dug his cavalry in. So we can actually... These guys here... I'll limber this battery up just so we can surround him. And then we're going to go ahead and attack this enemy cavalry and see if we can cause this regiment to surrender. There we go. So we caused an entire enemy cavalry regiment to surrender. A victory for us there, a big one there. Uh, we should expect a counterattack from the 28th New York here, which is stronger than either of our regiments to its front. Uh, but at least for the moment anyway, we did bring one of our batteries out of, uh, out of firing by uh, moving it. Uh, but we, we caused an enemy regiment of cavalry to surrender, and that is instantly 66 uh, prisoners of war uh, that we capture, as well as the full value of their weapons cost capture. So a good result for us there. Meanwhile, we're going to continue hitting the first New York artillery over here, uh, which is uh, the last artillery that we can see that is, uh, that is ready to uh, bombard our troops. Uh, I would expect that the three other batteries we've already driven off have probably rallied by this point. Uh, but at least there's the you know they'll be they'll have to pay money to reinforce their ammo and uh, they're at least not in the strong positions they were in before um, and uh, yeah so I mean it's a good result for us we're going to continue hitting this New York regiment until it withdraws completely there we go we've got it routed uh, and all of its ammo is ours okay so that's good um, I think at this point now we can kind of focus our artillery on the enemy infantry. And so I think what we want to understand is can we advance to try and surround these guys? Do we have enough? We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got five infantry regiments here, potentially seven if we mount up the officers. But we really don't have enough to surround two regiments of enemy infantry. So I think what we have to do here is try and attack the enemy regiment to the rear, the Massachusetts regiment here on top of this hill, drive them back, and then we can go ahead and uh, surround the regiment to their front, the more powerful one, um, which is the bigger threat, uh, but also the bigger prize. Okay, so that does it for our artillery that turn. The rest of these guys are going to sit in place 
We're still about an hour from any reserves arriving. All right. So that victory on our right flank, I think, was a good thing. The AI didn't do anything that turn, as far as we can see. And so we're going to continue hitting the second Massachusetts with artillery. Now that we have artillery superiority here, we're going to we're going to use it, and our guns are going to grow hot with the continued firing of of rounds against enemy troops. As we attempt, we might even drive them off just with our artillery at this rate. Can they shoot over that way? They can't. They can shoot over here, though. Yeah, can't hit them that far out. We could go for the 28th New York. Which is dug in. I don't know if there's any troops to aid them or not. Ease, man. Why are my troops man. morale in the yellow? At like, why ease, is our man. army morale so low? We've got four, five, no, sir. one, two, three, four, five, six. We need six. We could limber these guns up and try and use them again to help surround an enemy regiment. I don't think they're going to be attacking anytime soon. The problem is we probably can't get in their rear before they withdraw. Um, so that'll do it for this turn. Let's go ahead and save just in the event that the game crashes on us. All right, so we'll go ahead and... And the turn, and again, nothing doing. A bunch of reinforcements arrive for us this turn. Um, the Union is doing nothing. A whole Union line of infantry out here past these woods, a very solid formation. We are going to advance. We all, all, a bunch of reserves arrived for us this turn, so we are going to advance on the enemy. Might maybe even see if we can surround both of these regiments. I guess I'd be more interested in dissuading these fresh troops over here from aiding the enemy. Or at least weakening them. Okay. We've got these guys pretty battered, I think. Not yet enough to cause them to retreat on their own, but pretty close. Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and bomb these Marylanders to prevent them from trying to move against us. The 28th New York is pretty well shot up, just from artillery to the front. I'd love to see if we could get around them. Maybe even tempt them to attack to their front. I don't want to rout them with artillery, though, so I'm not going to... Now that they're red morale, I'm not going to continue hitting them. We'll aim at other targets. Alright, so let's go ahead and save again. And then end the turn. Interesting. So the Federals of the 27th Indiana attack to the right. Oh boy. All right, well, these guys are retreating. Um, can I... Move these guys here. All right, so we can attack. We did get these guys, the 27th Indiana, surrounded. So at this point, I think what we want to do is we want to hit them as, as hard as we can hit them anyway. I can't hit them with everything, but I can try and go for the Marylanders who could be a threat to liberate them. Um, we'll just keep hitting the, the targets we can hit with the artillery. Why can't I hit these guys? They're like a hex away. My artillery is going to get romped if... Uh If I can't hit them at all. Gotta be able to weaken them a bit. They're surrounded, which is good. 
but yeah, look, these guys are just retreating straight to the rear. Let's try and tempt them to attack south, although their morale's probably too low to allow them to attack anything at this moment. Um. Just trying to aim for the targets I can aim for. I can't believe I can't hit any of these guys. I would like to think they're so battered up they can't move, but usually the game lets even battered up troops retreat. Okay. So at this point, do we can we attack with anything? I guess what we do is, can these guys attack? They can. So I think what we do here is we're going to order a charge from the 5th Virginia. It's probably not going to break him, and it's going to take huge casualties, but it should weaken them considerably. We did lose almost double the casualties there. All right, so now we're going to charge with the 27th Virginia, which has almost doubled their firepower, and that did it. That forced the Federals to surrender over 319 Federal casualties, and a large enemy regiment knocked out. We'll pull these guys back. Move these guys over here. Uh, meanwhile, the second mass is going to be charged by the 4th Virginia, which pushed them back with heavy losses. So that was a good result for us there. And we've got another brigade or regiment of reserves that just came up. So that's a pretty good start, I think, to the main engagement phase of this battle. Our casualties, because of that one federal attack that really wrecked one of our regiments, uh, the casualties are nearly even in terms of wounded and killed. But we now have forced over 817 federals to surrender. We have more than three, you know, more than four times their victory control hexes, and we have um, actually surprisingly less in the way of victory points. But uh, I would imagine that'll change with time. Uh, with that being said, can these guys fire? They already have. Okay, so let's go ahead and end the turn. Interestingly enough, the 28th did attack south, just as I had hoped, against our undefended, limbered up uh, artillery. So now, I can proceed to surround them, and these guys' morale is already shot. So all it took was a single attack by a regiment, and they surrendered. So a second federal regiment surrendered. I'm going to move these guys up onto this hill. Our cavalry has arrived as well. So we'll bring them up. We've really broken what little federal men were on their right. I think we're going to need to bring our artillery up because there's not much it can reach from way over here on the far right of our of our flank in the rear. The right rear artillery really can't do a ton. Actually, several of these guys can hit the uh, first Maryland at least. Not all of them though. So this one battery is going to need to move forward. Apparently the federal artillery, if it's rallied, hasn't rallied to anything nearby. Remove our artillery here, limbered up, again as bait. We'll see if the enemy takes it. Probably move our cavalry in behind. Might be able to get the cavalry around their rear. I'd love to get these 680 men, as POWs. Meanwhile, the 7th Louisiana, the one regiment of ours that bore the brunt of the enemy's successful attack, is going to just rest. The second mass has fallen back behind their line of three very firm regiments, all dug in here on the left. Ruger's 3rd Wisconsin, Murphy's 29th Pennsylvania, and Knipe's 46th Pennsylvania. Let's see if we can route these guys with Artie. Yeah, yeah, we routed them with artillery. Got all their supply points, too. Let's continue shooting at what we can with our artillery. Okay. 
These guys are in abates, or however you pronounce that. All right. Okay, so their their firepower isn't quite as strong. So we're gonna form up a battle line here facing the main enemy line here on the left. Move most of our reserves in that way. I think that'll do it. So another regiment surrendered, another regiment routed, and that's where we stand at 10 in the morning at the Battle of Winchester. A lot of Federal Cavalry is arriving on the field. It looks like a bunch of infantry reserves too on the left. Um, I don't think I can get my cavalry in behind them. Grip. All right. Um, let's just try and charge these guys. Can we do that? It'll cost a lot of army morale. No, sir. Probably not worth it. Let's just attack them and see if we drive them back. We did. Okay. I mean, honestly, maybe we just need to form up a battle line here to defend the new hill that we just took at Camp Hill. It's most of the objectives. Probably do it. Probably form them up. We almost, I think we have enough men to do it. Wouldn't be the strongest line in the world. Definitely see some of those troops would be pretty weak. But it looks like we can reach. We could do it. Um, let's rest this artillery battery. We're bringing them up. Let's bring some more of our artillery up. Okay. These guys for it as a reserve. And then we're going to go ahead and dig in all the troops we can on this hill we took to the south of Winchester. Mainly to rest up our troops. They're pretty exhausted here from the constant marching and fighting. We have new reserves coming forward. 7th Louisiana will continue to rest. It's still early in the day. We'll hit this, the 5th Connecticut there in uh, column formation. We'll hit this cavalry. They're exposed. Actually, the first Mar main cal main or Maryland main cavalry is uh, somewhat vulnerable in that position. All right, so we will limber these guys up. We're going to move this battery forward here to the heights. All right, so we're resting a bunch of our troops. Actually, let's undo that. I want to leave them in the saddle. All right, we will see what comes of this. At ease, man. This battery could use a rest, so we'll rest and resupply them. Jackson's going to ride over here to the right flank to add some support. What is his rank? rank? Jackson is still only a colonel, and yet he's riding around with uh, as if he's a division commander. That's interesting. All right. So we'll go ahead and see what happens here. All right, so the Federals are moving some lines toward us. It'll be interesting to see if they actually attack any of those lines. Because it kind of never seems like they do. 
All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Civil War Generals 2, uh, the 1997 Sierra Entertainment classic. We're in the midst of the Battle of Winchester. Things are going reasonably well for us. We've forced two federal units, I think it is, to surrender over 1,400 men. We've inflicted a few more casualties on the enemy. But the battle is far from decided yet. There's still a, a number of uh, fresh and full and deadly federal regiments on the left flank. And we don't really know what's out there on the right flank. There's a lot of cavalry showing up just near the Winchester area. Uh, and uh, it looks like they may have rallied some of their artillery as well. So we'll see thing how things shape out in our next video when we finish up the Battle of Winchester. But until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.